In this short audio presentation, we'll continue our discussion on the strategy to increase exports of Pakistan to US dollar 60 billion by 2030. In the previous presentation, I have discussed the context of this strategy, while in this presentation, we will discuss the framework. In my view, a good strategic framework is always elegant, which means that it is not cluttered and has few essential features. Following this rule, our framework has got five key features. In my view, these features are absolutely essential to increase our export to US dollar 60 billion by 2030. Let's go through these one by one. Investment in value addition is the first component of our export strategy. There are several exportable products which cannot be exported unless they are processed. Other products which are exported in raw form, they fetch a value far less than when they are processed. Pakistan can maximize its export through encouraging private investments in value addition. However, our selection must be strategic, which means that we must select the product categories which offers the highest potential for growth in export and provide incentives only in these handful sectors. With the resources of a poor country, we cannot afford to spread ourselves too thin. Strategic selection of products will help us to keep a focus and maximize the impact. The second feature of our strategic framework is quality standards and certifications. Nations and organizations working within these nations have certain quality requirements which the producers in Pakistan must meet to enter these markets. For several product categories, there are standards which are truly global in nature, which means that every nation accepts these global standards. For these product categories, Pakistani entrepreneurs simply need to certify themselves on these standards and they'll be able to trade with any country and any organization in the world. There are other product categories uh, where there is no real global standard uh, that is accepted or in other words different countries or different regional blocks uh, have their own set of standards. Uh, this is where it becomes slightly more complicated for the Pakistani exporters. One option is that we invite the certification bodies from these markets to come and operate in Pakistan so Pakistani entrepreneurs can certify themselves according to their requirements. And the other option is uh, that we legislate our own standards uh, within Pakistan to align ourselves to the requirements of major markets. Regardless of the options, the private sector in Pakistan and the government will have to work tightly in collaboration to make all of this happen. The third component of our export strategy is participation of Pakistani exporters in international trade fairs. Product-specific trade fairs happen all around the year throughout the world. By participating in these trade fairs, Pakistani exporters can establish important linkages with buyers from across the world. In addition to participating in international trade fairs in other countries and regions, Pakistan must also try to conduct these events locally. By inviting international companies to Pakistan to participate in the trade fairs, we'll expose a much larger number of exporters to these buyers. And hopefully, our export will grow even faster. The fourth component of our export strategy is building skills of Pakistani entrepreneurs in e-commerce and marketing. The digital platforms are gaining importance in international trading. By building these crucial skills among the Pakistani entrepreneurs, we can ensure that our enterprises are not left behind. The fifth and the last component of the strategic framework is the bilateral trade agreements between Pakistan and other nations. The purpose of these bilateral trade agreements is to provide a preferential access to Pakistani exporters in these markets. Pakistan has signed a number of bilateral trade agreements with the regional countries such as China, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Afghanistan, and Iran. But if you look at the trade with these countries, uh, that's not very encouraging. And the reason for that is that these Bilateral trade agreements in isolation will not produce the results. We need to align all the other components of this strategy for these bilateral trade agreements to work. Or in other words, we need to build a coherence between all the components of our export strategy to optimize the outcomes. So these are the five components or a strategic framework to increase Pakistan export to $60 billion by 2030. If you have any questions or want to share your feedback, please leave a comment.